Astrophotography. It's probably one of the most exciting but challenging type of photography. And for me, maybe second to macro photography, which I'm still exploring right now. Both of them requires a specialized lens, but if you're just starting, you can actually use whatever lens that you've got, even if it's a kid lens. Remembering my first experiences shooting the stars, I normally don't plan ahead and just do some trial and error. Eventually, practice really helps, but more work needs to be done. These were some of my attempts in astrophotography, and if the weather is right, I usually go out and shoot even just in our backyard. As for my personal experience, I'm going to share some tips if you want to try astrophotography, specifically if you're using a Sony camera. So we have to consider the following, a camera body, lenses, tripod, settings, editing, and most especially, planning. I find that since we can acquire those tools, planning is a bit tricky due to weather conditions and the position of heavenly bodies. As you can see from here, I'm using a mobile app called Skyview to locate the position of the Milky Way at any specific time. For camera body, I'm going to use the Sony A7 Mark III, a full-frame mirrorless camera. You might also notice that this camera is sitting on this L-shaped unit called an L-bracket. Although not thoroughly needed, I highly recommend to use one of these to easily aid you in your composition. You can mount your camera with ease on your tripod and easily frame your subject, especially in portrait mode. And it also works well in landscape mode. From here, L-bracket gives flexibility than the conventional way of mounting the camera in portrait mode. For lenses, I normally opt to use ultra-wide angles to capture the vastness of the stars, especially the Milky Way. Lenses with wide aperture like f1.8 up to 2.8 is ideal, and even the kit lens with aperture like f3.5 can also do the job. I usually stick with at least minimum of f2.8 for better focusing, low ISO, and shorter exposure, and even better using lenses with f1.8 and above. Since astrophotography is a type of long exposure, it cannot be done handheld. You need a tripod to avoid any slide movement, and it depends on your preference on how light or heavy your camera is. Some big tripods can be folded in a way to become user-friendly while traveling from different locations. Just a tip when doing a long exposure on a tripod, turn off any image stabilization as it will introduce more shake and blur to the image. And now for the settings, you definitely should not shoot in auto. So we need to turn the dial to manual mode. We need to set ISO roughly between 1600 up to 6400. ISO value is really dependent on your lens aperture, shutter speed, and your surroundings light pollution. For lens aperture, I normally use the widest it can offer, either f1.8 or f2.8. As for long exposure, the way to calculate on how much we need to leave the shutter open depends on your lens focal length and the camera body. Either it uses a full frame or crop sensor. We can use the conventional 500 rule, where even if you're using a full frame sensor, we just need to divide 500 to whatever the lens focal length you intended to use. And likewise, we have to consider the crop factor if you're using a crop sensor body. There is another method to set the exposure, and that is by using the NPF rule, where N stands for notation for aperture, P for pixel density or pixel pitch, and f for focal length. It follows this certain formula. I personally haven't used the NPF rule yet, but a mobile app called Photofields offers the NPF calculator built into it. Apparently, NPF tends to give you shorter exposure than the 500 rule. We also have to consider the following. Shoot and uncompress RAW for editing. Turn off any image stabilization. We can also leave the white balance to auto since we're shooting in RAW. We need to change any autofocus to just manual focus, and while focusing on the stars, we can set it to infinity as a reference, and then give a bit of tolerance until you achieve pinpointed stars in focus. A sturdy tripod as stated before, and something that can manually or remotely trigger the shutter button. These were some samples of my shots using the 500 rule. The lens that was used here is the Tamron 17-28mm f2.8, roughly with 20 seconds exposure for each shot. But out of these methods, I wanted to share my favorite way of shooting the stars, and that is by adding and using a star tracker.
The one that I have here is a very compact and lightweight star tracker called Polari by Vixen Optics. This device moves along with the star's bipolar alignment. Using this can bypass the exposure set by either of these methods, which means exposure can go beyond 30 seconds, 60 seconds, or more. Vixen Polari is powered by two AA size batteries. There is also a switch to toggle if you're living in either south or north hemisphere. The thread at the bottom is where you can connect to a tripod, and looking at its size, it's compact and not much bigger than an ordinary iPhone. The front part is where you can mount a tripod ball head, or in your camera sit on top of it. With a flexible ball head, you can adjust and frame the Milky Way exactly as you wanted without moving the main star tracker. This part here is the polar sight hole to aid you in pointing and focusing the tracker to either south or north star. Straight from the box, this tracker's payload capacity is up to 2.5 kg, which can be further increased to 6.5 by upgrading the kit. So for this demonstration, I tried to use the following setup, a Sony A7 Mark III, Tamron 20-75mm f2.8, both mounted on top of this Vixen Polaris Star Tracker. I did try to do a long exposure of the Milky Way, and then edit from this to this. I uploaded the original RAW file with the link in the video description below, so you can also edit them on your own. It will be an exciting learning for everyone. So let's start. Astrophotography is fun but at the same time challenging. For planning, you have to check the weather, make sure it's clear and not cloudy. Second, you have to make sure that the moon is not visible, or if possible, not too bright. As you can see from here, it is really light and compact star tracker. It can also track the moon and the sun during eclipse. Getting this tracker changes the way I do astrophotography. It let me expose a bit longer than a popular 500 rule, and I can really get sharp and pinpointed stars even with an exposure of 1 minute and beyond. As I had mentioned before, and depends where you live, you have to point it either to the north or south star. I currently living here in New Zealand, so I'm going to use the Southern Hemisphere and located the South Star called Octans. I had used the mobile app called Skyview and pointed and aligned the tracker to that South Star. And then switch on the Star Tracker mode. And then as mentioned before, along with the guides that were provided, we have to change some camera settings to adjust it for astrophotography. If you are using a different camera, these settings won't be too far. It's just the name or button layout might be a bit different. Some camera settings can be toggled on the lens itself, while others like the Sony A7 Mark III needs to be adjusted in the body. Almost all cameras can also be controlled remotely via an app from a smartphone, and with that, you don't have to touch the actual camera shutter button and instead do almost everything in the app. I'm almost finished changing up some settings. You have to remember that since we're in manual mode, we have to set things up individually, including the ISO and shutter speed. I had used Sony's dedicated app called Imaging Edge to control the camera remotely, some basic Sony A7 Mark III settings can be viewed and changed from here. And then slide this virtual shutter button to start the operation. From here, I had already transferred all the images from my SD card to my laptop and check which one is the sharpest. This one here was shot in F5, ISO 3200, a 36mm with a single exposure of 204 seconds. You might also be wondering why I shot at f5 if I do have an f2.8 lens. Because I wanted to get sharp photos from edge to edge, and also f2.8 sometimes give me chromatic aberrations at the far edge corner stars. Here is an example of chromatic aberrations on the far edge corner stars. And lastly, I'm going to open Lightroom and start the editing process. So, doing a bit of inspection, 
some visible nebulae here, and the bright star Antares from Scorpius constellation. And lastly, adjusting the color tones, curve, and other parameters will yield us a good result.